Well, hello everybody. Uh, this is my last video for the year 2020. What a crazy, crazy year this has been. Uh, and as tradition, at the end of the year, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I've been up to this year and as well, uh, tell you some of my favorite pieces of gear that were uh, brought into the studio throughout the year as well. So uh, I will divide uh, the video in chapters in the description. So if you just wanna go straight to the review stuff or my, my picks, uh, there's probably gonna be like a little thing you click in the description. So check that out if you wanna skip the, uh, I don't know, the, the reminiscing part, the part where I, I talk about stuff. Uh, so that way when I'm really old and I don't remember, I could just watch this video and remember what I was up to, all right? So <laughs> this video is brought to you by Rufus Guitar Shop. Thanks. Uh, Team at Rufus, you've really been a wonderful help this year. Uh, let's start off with January. January actually started great. You know, <laughs> we didn't know 2020 was like brimming in the horizon. So 2020, we had a, uh, the band uh, and a bunch of wonderful girls, our uh, Trilogy girls showed up. They're like little dancers. And uh, we did a show at the Hard Rock Casino just to rain in the year. It was like a beach theme. So it was really an excuse just to wear beach clothes in the middle of, uh, or the end of December. So it was really wonderful. It was loud, it was banging, there was confetti. It was the best. We were ready to rock into 2020. And actually the first little chunk of 2020 was really, really eventful and really, really fun. I've been in a band for a long time called Red Eye Empire. It's like a rock reggae band. Uh, you know, we toured with G Love and and uh, Slightly Stupid and uh, I don't know, like thinking of names to name drop Sublime. And we did we did a bunch of all that stuff and the, the festival circuit with them for a long time. And we decided uh, to call it quits uh, in 2020. And we released our very, very last album as kind of a goodbye present to all the people that have been following the band for so, uh, so long called uh, the Vernon Grant Chronicles. Uh, so, uh, it was a wonderful thing to do. It was a, a wonderful little parting gift. And the, the fact that we did it uh, in this little studio that we built was wonderful. I did most of the production on everything and played most of all the guitars on it and uh, helped with the songwriting process. So if you're ever on Spotify, Red Eye Empire, Vernon Grant Chronicles, that might be something you might want to check out, eh? Uh, getting into the year, we went straight to Nam and... Nam was wonderful this year. It was great. We came a little bit early. I, I brought my whole little team, uh, the Trilogy boys, uh, with me. And we came early because I had to do this little thing that Boutique Amp Distribution was organizing. Uh, Boutique Amp Distribution, they make, uh, it's like a big warehouse kind of thing. And they make a bunch of really boutique stuff for uh for consumption. So uh, they make all the stuff for like Matthews Effects and Wampler, uh, Soldano and uh, Friedman amps, all, all that's kind of made in this wonderful, we got to go there, check out the manufacturing process. It was awesome. And what was even better about it is I got to see some of my old friends there from uh, TGU and, and 42 Gear Street, uh, guys like RJ and Ryan from 60 Cycle Hum and Phil McKnight and Glenn Frick. You know, there to do this YouTube guitar thing, it, it, you need a very specific skill set and 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 be able to serve or solve very specific questions. So every time I see them, it's it's wonderful, and all of those people are just as wonderful in real life as. Uh, you think they are. They're all the best people you'll ever meet. I got to hang out with them. I even got to do a, a, a thing with Steve Vai. We filmed something with Steve Vai. I haven't released that yet. That's actually just sitting on a hard drive. Me and Brian Wampler, actually, I, I coerced Brian to do it with me. We had like a little skit. Anyway, that might come out one day. Uh, uh, Glenn has a studio, I think it's called here, Harmony Recording Studio. Him and Warren Hewitt from uh, Record Like a Pro, I think is his thing page. Uh, they had the studio and we got to go there, have a couple drinks. I got to play on the piano that they recorded Someone Like You, like that Adele song. <laughs> you suck, Jay! And after that, we pretty much went to a bowling alley and just ate and drank all night. It was the best. And Nam was just like that old friend's contacts and buddies, people that you talk to online but you never see in real life as much. 
it's just, I, I love going to NAMM, and this year was no exception. I did a, uh, a couple things with Boss Pedals. Uh, with Boss, I was uh, I did the release for their RC-10R. I did their global release last year, so they wanted me to do little clinics every day on the RC-10R, so we did that, and uh, that was kind of just a good excuse to wake up early in the morning. <laughs> so I had the whole day free to uh, go around and uh, go to the various little uh, appearances I needed to make and see all the people I needed to see. Obviously the people at Boss are wonderful and, and uh, I got to see a bunch of the cool stuff they're working on. They're always working on really, really cool stuff. And after NAM, oh, there's actually a couple other things that were cool about NAM. Obviously there's a stomp box party where all the stomp box makers and all the YouTubers and, and people that are affiliated in that industry, we all have to hang out and drink and party and that was great. And Sinusoid, uh, which is a cable company, always has a wonderful party that uh, we went to as well. Uh, uh, what's a Korean barbecue? Oh, wonderful. Uh, John uh, Thompson, Bad Cat Amps, he had a private uh, booze cruise like yacht party and it was uh, us and Rob Chapman and uh, a couple other people, just a small group. Oh, one. See, 2020 is looking pretty good right now, isn't it? After that, this is where it gets great. We went to the Dominican Republic. So again, I'm with a, a band, the, the Trilogy Boys. The Trilogy went down. There's a big uh, company there that had their, uh, it was kind of like their uh, awards thing. And we were the, the house band for this event. So it was great. We all got these cool matching suits. And uh, there was a huge thing and loud music and spotlights and the, the laser light show. They went all out. It was They actually reserved like the whole hard rock at uh, Punta Cana, uh, Dominican Republic. So uh, it was wonderful. And they gave us these beautiful suites and hot tubs. And it was great. And after that, they had this beach party layout thing. And they had this huge jam thing. And so we played at it. And there was another band called... Uh, the Lieutenant Dan Band, it was Gary Sinise's band. <laughs> they played a set. Gary wasn't there, it was like all these other people, but all these people seem to be old New York heavies and all stuff. So it was great hanging out backstage and getting all this sun in. Again, this is 2020, who would have thought, eh? We were all hugging each other too. We're all like sharing drinks and sharing food. 2020, we didn't even know. But we get back from uh, Dominican Republic, and I guess that's, I'm looking at my notes here. Yeah, I think right after that, that's when the ball dropped. And uh, all the gigs, I play, last year we did 149 gigs, and I think uh, we had about, yeah, about 140 gigs, 130 gigs get canceled this year, just like that, on the drop of a hat. And this was, oh, it was horrible because it was gonna be a very good year. All the uh, award shows that we play at and all the uh, public events, all the festivals, outdoor festivals. I'm on the road all summer and that was all gone, just wiped off the face of the earth. No gigs and uh, gosh. And not only that, my wife is actually the public health inspector. So uh, her, uh, her team was actually in charge of uh, they actually were doing a lot of contact tracing and they were also doing all the COVID, making sure all the restaurants were following code stuff. So actually she was out all the time. And before you know it, I'm kind of like at home taking care of the kids and I'm doing the dad thing, which was actually wonderful. I really didn't realize how much I I was away when until this thing hit and I got to be with the kids and oh, it was Wonderful, it was absolutely great. And getting ready, you know, connecting with the family, getting a little in, more in touch. It was a horrible thing that happened, but uh, I was very fortunate to be in a situation where uh, there was some good to come out of it. So I, I definitely am one of the very, very uh, lucky ones. Uh, unfortunately, uh, not too long after this thing started, a very, very close friend, Alex Clay, who was with uh, Wampler Pedals and everything, he actually passed away, which was a huge shock to a bunch of us and uh, a lot of people in our community. He was, um, he was actually the reason I got into Wampler and he was my uh, in into boutique amp distribution. And uh, so a lot of the stuff, uh, the, a lot of the growth of the page uh, was, from him and and I didn't even, you know, I talked to him all the time online, 
but I never really talked to him in person, you know. And, and so uh, it was very strange when he, because it was like, it was probably my first close friend that I never really knew face to face that that went away. And uh, I, I owe so much to the growth of this page to him. It was uh, very, very sad uh, when that happened. Uh, but there was a lot of things that kept me busy uh, during lockdown. As I said, I, uh, I'm in Vancouver, so we did have to do a little bit of a shutdown. And uh, I'm just trying to look at things. Uh, we did a lot of, uh, in terms of production, I was doing some stuff out of the studio. So there was a, a movie called Volition that we did. And I started working on this project on uh, Bizping, uh, uh, Biz, Bizping, right? Uh, the uh, UFC fighter. And I think it's coming out this year. And we did a bunch of the music for that. Uh, Boss, actually, is a really cool one. Uh, they have like this GT1000 multi-effects unit and there's like this Tone Central app that's part of the architecture of this pedal where you could download uh, a, we call it sound samples and they asked me to give 10 uh, of my presets to come up with like a little J. Leonard J collection which was really cool. Uh, I'm a big fan of Boss and just to see your name on that little tone central and you're kind of in that list and people are downloading your tones and stuff is super cool and it's 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 awesome i it's i can't uh i can't overstate exactly how cool of an experience it is and being part of it so if you do have a, a gt1000 please download my tones I actually put a ridiculous amount of time into them, getting them just right. Uh, I'm making sure they fit with a lot of different guitars. So I'm really proud of what happened. And actually I'm doing the same thing with Hughes and Kettner for their uh, Black Spirit amp. So keep your eyes open for that as well. Um, uh, we There was a lot of uh, performances, uh, virtual performance. I did a virtual thing uh, with Tomin. Um, as well as a bunch of virtual performances uh, with an artist I work with called Warren Flandes. And uh, in fact, uh, I, did, I just did a, uh, a Christmas uh, video for him and they did a wonderful job with that. It just looked super, uh, super cool. And uh, luckily there have been a few gigs uh, after this whole lockout thing, which has uh, been very, very different playing in front of uh, spread out people. It's a completely different vibe, but it actually works and people really do enjoy listening to the music. On top of that, uh, every Sunday I do take part in a live uh, church service uh, that's done virtually. And I definitely get to uh, at least keep my guitar fingers and playing chops up just uh, getting all the music ready for that every uh, week. And to wrap up the year 2020, I've been doing some stuff for Guitar World Online. I've been doing demos and stuff for them, which has been a great partnership. And I also got to take part in the Guitar Live, Guitar Online Symposium thing. It was pretty much like this big online event for three days with people like uh, St. Vincent and Joe Bonamassa and Santana and channels like mine, 60 Cycle Hum, and uh, all your favorite YouTubers. Pretty much anyone that has anything to do with guitar gear was part of this event. And I was really lucky uh, to do two things for the event. I did a guitar masterclass on my guitar funk style. And I also got to take part in probably one of the most fun online guitar debates uh, where we just talked about anything. <laughs> we just debated about every guitar issue known to man. It was probably one of the funniest things of the year. Well, now that you know what I've been up to this year, let's get right into the gear. This is uh, the gear of the year. These are the things that have really stuck out to me. I believe everything was released in 2020. If not, it was on my desk on 2020. So uh, just to make things simple for me, these are the things that stuck out for me. Uh, when it comes to guitar of the year, that was pretty much a no brainer for me. I, I was really close to saying this in terms of practicality. I use this all the time. This is a, the Yamaha BB735 uh, five string bass. I've been using that on anything bass related lately. And it's a, a nice, really affordable bass. That, uh, I just got on the studio or in the studio and I've been using on everything, but best guitar I've, I've, I've played this year is this one over here. This is my Friedman Vintage S. And if you watched my video on this, uh, you know the story behind it. The story was I was doing the boss thing at NAMM 
and I was had to, I had to do the RC10R, right? So it was a clinic on the RC10R, and I forgot mine at home, which had all my presets in it, which means the day before NAM, I had to program all my presets back. So I borrowed one from the boss booth and I went back to the hotel or the whatever complex we were staying at. And I realized I didn't bring a guitar with me. So I called uh, the people uh, at Boutique Amp Distribution, said, bring any guitar. I, I don't care what guitar it is, just give me something. And I just need to program my presets for this RC10R for tomorrow. So they met up with me like outside of like some random hotel and they didn't even have a case for it. The guy just had it like under his shirt or something. And I fell in love with it. And this is the guitar, uh, HHS. I never really play HHS guitars, but it's just, this is, I don't know. I, I just completely bond with this instrument. They put a uh, metal dowel in, uh, in between the uh, body and neck uh, joint. And when you strum it, it fills up the room and you could actually feel it vibrating in your hands. I actually just strummed it when I was programming my presets with my, you know, my monitors in. I was like doing it silently through my, my computer. And even the people in the room I, uh, were just going, wow, that's one resonant guitar. It was piercing through the air. It's incredible. It sounds fantastic. It plays incredible. Guitar of the year, right here. Friedman Vintage S. If you've watched the page, you know it's my favorite guitar of the year because I've been playing it all over the page lately. Uh, amp of the year, oh, that was a tougher one. Uh, I had a bunch of really good ones. I had a bunch of Tone King amps, uh, this Yamaha thing over here. Uh, the Morgan MVP 66 is so good. That's such a good amp. <laughs> oh man. But it has to go down to a tie between the Tone King Imperial and the Tone King Sky King. They're pretty much just uh, higher wattage, lower wattage versions of the same uh, thing. Kind of a black face thing here and a like almost like a hot rotted brown face thing. That, that I think the, the, the copy says tweed, but I'm hearing more of a brown facey kind of vibe. And both are voiced so well and it has an attenuator built in and it's a good attenuator. <laughs> and it has tremolo and the reverb and the reverb changes depending on what channel you're on in terms of uh, how intense it is. It's just so well thought out. They're so beautiful. Uh, depending on what your output needs are, you can't go wrong with either. But uh, definitely uh, I've been using it all over the page just because of its versatility and how good it sounds. It just sounds fantastic. Uh, I have a, what a, a original blackface deluxe, and I've been using this. So there you go. Uh, let's see here what we have on the list here. Okay, let's get into the pedals. Pedals of the year. Okay, well, I got a, a, a couple things uh, in terms of of solution of the year. Like every year, there's a a pedal that's kind of designed to solve a problem that you have in your rig. So uh, things like the uh, Iron Man 2 attenuator were great. Uh, the Anasounds power supply that they released is called the K Plus. I thought that was a great solution because I've never had a power supply with that much like amperage coming out of each isolated channel. Like if you're a person with really high consumption pedals, uh, I have a talk box that's 18 volts and it needs two amps and that power supply can do it. So if you're in the market, for a power supply that can handle really high amounts of uh, amperage, that's the one to go for. But my pick for the solution of the year is this one over here. This is the Torpedo Captor X by Two Notes. I love Two Notes stuff. It is so good. Uh, it's pretty much a cab M, which is their Two Notes amp sims and uh, cab sims. And you could choose your miking. It has an app that goes with it, all that stuff but it also is a built-in reactive load attenuator. So usually you would have to get like a cab M and a reactive load. This is all of it in one. And I could just plug all any of my tube amps into this thing and I don't need to plug in a speaker and I'm not gonna damage my amp and it's gonna have the reactive load. In 2020, this thing is essential. If you are a tube amp lover, you're stuck at home, you need to get this thing. This is incredibly valuable. Uh, the Torpedo Captor X, best in the biz. I think this thing is fantastic, perfect. Uh, let's go into the pedals now. Uh, the modulation of the year. 
is this one over here, the Mr. Black Analog Course and Vibrato. I was blown away when this thing came in because it is so clear. I was, when, when I hear the word analog chorus, I think of like that warm chorus sound, you know, the CE1 or, or CE2, sorry, the CE2 sound, you know, that, that uh, there's a lot of other uh, ones that just do wonderful. The analog, what's it called? The Way Huge makes a great chorus pedal and that's analog and has that drenchy, warm, thick, gooey stuff. But when I plugged this thing in, that's what I was expecting. What I got instead was some of the clearest hi-fi precision chorus I've ever heard in an analog pedal. It's, it's almost digital in, in the fact that you get the separation and the high end stays intact and, it, and it's not that noisy. It's crazy. The, the filtering in this thing is so advanced. This is an incredibly hard pedal to make, I can imagine. There's four different waveforms in it. I used two of them. Uh, to be completely honest. The other two are pretty good, but the, when you go, uh, I like the square, I love the triangle when you're going chorus sounds. You could use the vibrato, use the sine wave. Anyway, I'm rambling. It's just, that I love this thing. It sounds incredible. If you're in the market for a chorus pedal, this is a no brainer. One of the best pedals of 2020, incredible stuff. Uh, my time pedal, my delay reverb pedal of the year is going to be this, the Echoes Delay Looper by Keeley Effects. They, I, I don't even know how to start with this. I usually hear that modulated delay, you know, we have the chorus with the delay sound to give it this old tape sound. I've never experimented with flanger being the modulation and it is incredibly great sounding. It sounds great clean, it sounds great distorted it is so well voiced and it works so well in your sound and it could be as crazy or as subtle as you want it to be. And it has that slight amount of quirkiness that makes it stand out. The layout is incredibly well thought out. The, pre, uh, the preset system is incredibly thought out. Uh, the only thing that's really missing is MIDI, uh, but for my board, I'm not really running MIDI. So this is just the perfect thing. And there's a looper built into this thing. And you could loop the different flange sounds and switch your presets while you're looping and get all kinds of crazy stuff. Even if this didn't have a looper, this would be one of my favorite, this would, it would still win the award, even if it didn't have a looper. It is that good. This is a really fantastic pedal and a unique one uh, in a time where I've heard so many different delays. This one really stood out to me. This is the Echoes. And that brings me to the last thing and that is my pedal of the year. Where did I put it? Pedal of the year, the thing that I just thought was the coolest pedal that came on the bench. And this one actually, uh, it was one of the times where I plugged something in and I was like, that was the sound that was in my head. And uh, every time I have that moment, it ends up becoming a thing that I cherish forever. And this is one of the things, this is the Gigas by Catlin Bread. Uh, it is a fuzz pedal, and it is the sound that's in my head. <laughs> there, it comes down to two things that makes this pedal wonderful for me. It is the EQ system, the, the EQ and mids, the way they react with each other. You can get as forward or as behind as you, you want to be, and it's very well balanced, and you could get muffier tones or tone bendery tones with it, just very versatile, but really, this blend knob here, it has a blend. You could blend your clean tone in with the fuzz and that's where I get that sound in my head because I love the bloom of fuzz, uh, not the bloom, but the, 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 the harmonics of fuzz pedals. I love the way it saturates and, and, and just fills in the space and really sticks out like a sore thumb. But sometimes I wish it had more of a overdrive like attack or transient or distortion like attack or transient. With this blend knob, I can start blending it in. And not only that, I can blend it in quite a bit and then add another fuzz to piggyback and then I just create even crazier sounds. Because of that, the Gigas is the best pedal released in 2020. To wrap this up, I just wanna thank the Patreon subscribers. I did not expect 2020 to happen the way 2020 did and your support really was incredible. Uh, for all of you that are my Patreon subscribers, 
Uh, a lot of you do this, but if you don't, if you have any question about any piece of gear I demo, if you have any question about your board or what you want me to do on the page, anything at all, please send me a message. I'm always, I always put your messages at the top of my priority list. Your support means everything to me. I also wanna thank uh, the Rufus Guitar Shop uh, for uh, supporting the page as well, as, as, well as uh, everybody, all the wonderful, all the wonderful companies that have uh, supported the page through the years. That being said, I guess I'll see you all soon. Take care, goodbye, and happy holidays.